Hello, I'm Bill Moyers. Imagine that the United States has been conquered militarily by a vicious, oppressive foreign power. Imagine that U.S. officials under occupation decide not to resist the foreign power, but to do its bidding. And imagine that the foreign power has a consuming, murderous hatred for a particular segment of our population, say the Jews or blacks or Christians, and is bent on eliminating them altogether. Imagine that Americans compliantly join in, singling out these men, women, and children for persecution, and then agree to turn them over to be deported to parts unknown with obvious evil intent. Imagine what you, imagine what I would do if something like this were to occur. Would we stand idly by pretending it wasn't happening or rationalizing that, well, this doesn't really concern us anyway? Or would we be willing to put our lives on the line if necessary and that of our families because, well, because that's just the sort of person we are. The French, during the Nazi occupation of their country during World War II, were faced with just such choices and responsibilities. Throughout occupied Europe, individuals, families, and nations had to decide whether they were indeed their brother's keepers. Many, unfortunately, demonstrated that they were not. But Weapons of the Spirit, the film we're about to see, tells the story of a whole community that made the right moral choice. Most important, it reminds us that that moral choice remains the individual's to make. As the film aptly recalls, many Christians still have to face the magnitude of their failure during the Holocaust. To do so, they have to be able to measure what it was possible to do, what it was possible for even an entire community to do. Those are the issues that are illuminated by this film. I hope you've gathered your family around to experience this documentary and that you will stay afterwards to join me in meeting the man who produced it. His name is Pierre Sauvage, and his story, the story of the film and the story behind the film, is one I think you'll long remember. The film raises a lot of questions. Pierre intended that it would, and we'll probe some of them when we come back later in this broadcast. Will also explore his own personal story. And now, Weapons of the Spirit. How old were you when you set out to make this film? Well, let's see, I guess I was in my mid 30s. Long time ago. A long time ago, metaphorically? Yes, that too. That too. It was. Oh, it's almost hard to justify having spent that much time making this film, except that uh, making the film was really a, a quest for understanding where I came from, who I was, what life meant, what I was going to pass on to my kids. All that sounds awfully pompous, but I think it, it really amounted to that, and the project took hold of me, and I just had to bring it to completion. You grew up in New York. Did you hear growing up about Le Chambon? Did your parents constantly refer to it, make you mindful of that part of your story? Well, I guess the answer to that is, is, a, is perhaps a big paradox about the making of the film. Uh, the answer is no. My parents did not talk much about Le Chambon. Oh, I knew I was born there, but I didn't know that Le Chambon had mattered in any particular way. Uh, they um, basically were people who had put the past behind them uh, to the extent of not even uh, allowing me to know that they were Jewish and that I was Jewish. They didn't tell you? They did not tell me until no. I was 18. You were 18? Nothing in the home had indicated this? Nothing in the conversation had indicated this? Nothing in your own intuition had indicated this? You know, when you're raised under taboo, the, the power of that taboo is extraordinary. I, people sometimes can't believe that I could have not suspected or known, but the truth is I did not. I did not. It may not be meaningless that the film was not the work of a dutiful child fulfilling his parents' fondest wishes. It was the work of a rebellious child laying a claim to a part of the past, indeed to a heritage, indeed to an identity in that he had sense? essentially been deprived of. In what sense, rebellion? Well, the, the mere fact of, of becoming Jewish was a rebellion. I was sort of sent forth into the world as a, as a nothing. Uh, I wasn't a Christian. I was simply a nothing. 
And uh, that satisfied me for quite a while, by the way. I was a student in Paris, and it never bothered me. It took a long time for my to start measuring that that was not a productive way to live your life. I think two major influences, one, my wife, who is Jewish, and she sort of was working on me uh, a lot. And the other actually was Le Chambon, because I realized that a lot of what they did came out of their strong sense of self, their intimate knowledge of who they were, of what their history was. And I realized, well, if they were getting such strength from being who they were, then I had to aspire to be who I was. This is PBS.